Hello and welcome to the WB Mason Coach Report on GoHofstra.com. Joined as always by the head coach of the Hofstra Wrestling Program, Dennis Papadatos. Coach, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, coming off the EIWA Championships last weekend at Lehigh, a 10th place finish as a team, uh, the best since 2013-14, the first season for the Pride in the League when they finished fourth. Uh, five place winners, Ricky Stam, fifth at 165. He earns an automatic bid to the NCAA Championships. Uh, Zachary Knight and Ward finishes fourth at 285. He got an at-large bid to the NCAA Tournament. Uh, Sage Heller was fifth at 174. He missed out on automatic qualifier by one. He did receive an uh, alternate spot at the NCAA Tournament. He's the first first alternate, uh, which means he'll go to the tournament and he'll be there in case somebody doesn't make weight or, or pulls out for some reason. Yep. Uh, Charles Small finished 7th at 184 pounds, and Dylan Ryder finished 8th at 125 pounds. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on their performances and as and the team's overall performance at the EIWAs last weekend? Um, first of all, the EIWA is even probably um, as good of a conference. It's probably better than it was even, you know, uh, all those years ago when we even took 4th. There was only 14 teams, and there was probably less parity. The EIWA is unbelievably got a bunch of pa uh, parity. There's, uh, you know, we have four teams in the top 25. We probably have four other teams, which including teams like us that have, that have gotten votes that are top 25-ish teams. Um, there was a big separation between one through five. Then there was a, a point gap. Th six through 12 were right there. Like we were, we were like maybe one or two matches away that we would have been sixth all the way from 10th. You know what I mean? And, and, and then there was a gap from 12, to, you know, to the bottom. So we ended up 10th. Uh, still beating teams like Columbia and Drexel, who also – Drexel got four guys through. And, you know, Columbia had two guys in the finals, you know. And, and uh, uh, you know, Binghamton plays three guys. They had, you know, we played five guys, which is more than a lot of those teams. But some of those guys put people in the finals and, and scoring points in the front side is, is how we got passed that way. But it didn't matter. It's a – you know, as far as I'm concerned, if you can't win the thing, um, it's all about sending guys to nationals, right? So I thought the team performed well. I thought um, – there were some things that, you know, I felt were taken away from us a little bit. Um, it, you know, it is what it is. I'm sure a lot of people feel that way, uh, you know, I, with their program. But, uh, you know, we went in there with three guys seated in the top eight. We ended up with five guys placed. Uh, no one was supposed to qualify. We ended up with an automatic qualifier. Uh, you know, no one was supposed to, you know, earn an AQ. And then, you know, one of our bubble guys got put through. One, Sage, which I still don't even know how he's not fully put through, is the first alternate. And Dylan was on the board. Um, so I don't know what that means, you know, yet, but he's, I know he's not first alternate or anything, but you know, our four bubble guys really were right there. The, the other three finished one spot away from automatic qualification. Right. So, uh, we, we performed, um, I think we're better than we, than we performed, but you know, we definitely performed the teams in a good spirit. Um, I thought everyone fought, I thought everyone tried their hardest and there wasn't a point that people put efforts out there that I wasn't proud to have them in our singlet represent us. So uh, it was definitely a step in the right direction. All right. Now we turn our attention to the NCAA championships. Uh, a lot of uncertainty with the brackets right now with, yeah. with the ongoing uh, issues going on surrounding yeah. NCAA championships and, and what teams are doing. Yeah. So those really aren't out yet. But what is the preparation like for Ricky and Zach and Sage for uh, this coming week as you guys head to Minneapolis next Tuesday? Our whole team's still here. You know, we're training. Uh, you know, we made it very important, like, hey, guys, I know we don't have class this week and next week's spring break, but um, we need everyone to – got to replicate normal practices. So, the guy, you know, it also is going to help them for next year. And the guys have bought in and, and they're coming and they're training and do everything right. Same thing with tomorrow. We're having normal practices as if, as if nothing's different than we did for getting ready for – Binghamton in January, for, you know, 11th, whatever day that was. So nothing's changed. Um, you know, it's hard to prep for a guy. You know, we're hoping Sage gets in. But um, as soon as they post the brackets, an hour later, Ricky and Zach's draw changed as one team pulled out officially. And that team had, had two guys qualify. Conveniently enough, two guys at our weight. Conveniently enough, both guys were seated above us. So conveniently enough, our guys moved up. You know what I mean? So we, we are now wrestling a different guy in both situations. Um, so at this point, with all the uncertainty, there's no reason to prep for a guy because it legitimately can change as before we're done with this interview. So we'll figure that out. We're just moving forward on, 
you know, chasing our goals down, chasing our goals down of, of what we're trying to do. Day three, day three of the national tournament has been the goal, and we have guys that can carry the Hofstra logo to that day that it's still possible. We have two guys in. Hopefully we'll pull a third in and have three guys represented us. Um, you know, but besides that, we, we haven't, you know, we're trying to status quo. What's next? It, it doesn't matter. You know, this is what we trained for. We always talked about the goal was never to beat Citadel. It was never to beat Binghamton. It was never to beat Columbia. It was never to beat Air Force. It was never to beat, you know, some of the, um, Harvard, Brown, some of those teams that we beat. It, it was part of the process. It was never the goal. We are finally at the goal. We have two guys, hopefully three, at the goal, chasing down day three. Day three. You can't be an All-American or a national champ if you're not wrestling day three. So that's what, that's what we're looking to do, and which is prepping – we seem healthy. We seem in good spirits. The team's, you know, supportive around them. And then we'll leave Tuesday. And uh, I, I expect another competition, our 18th competition of the year, that I'll be proud of the guys we put out there in the Hofstra singlet. All right. Coach, I look forward to speaking with you in, in two weeks, and we can recap the NCAA tournament. Hopefully we're talking about some place winners, some All-Americans, yeah. uh, hopefully a national champion. Yeah, Who knows? That would be great. That's the plan, right? So good luck next week. Good luck to – Sage, good luck to Zach, good luck to Ricky, and uh, all the pride who are going out there to uh, to support the support the team. Not too many people can go at this point, as you know. We're still waiting to get clarification on that, but there should be some family in attendance. And we will talk to you uh, in two weeks. Appreciate it. You've been watching the WB Mason Coach Report on GoHofstra.com.